Hi, thanks for joining us today on what is episode seven of MotorServe TV, which is now available on Spotify and all other channels as our podcast. Today, I'm very pleased and excited to introduce an old friend and business associate, Emma Mills, who we are very happy to have on with us today. Emma has made her mark and name in the business PA world and is the owner of MyPA, a multi-million pound award-winning company, which is one of the largest PA and call handling agencies in the UK. Emma founded MyPA in 2007 and now has a massive team of PAs based in Manchester with clients all over the UK and abroad. Emma also hosts and runs her own podcast and media series called My TV, which provides a lot of useful tips and business experiences for others to learn from. So please join me in welcoming Emma to MotorServe UK. So welcome once again, Emma. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, is it Manchester that you live? Is that where you've come from today? Yeah, yeah. Did, just, just did the trip down on the M6, M42. Oh, dreaded M6. Did me, did me dirty on the way yeah. down at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the M6, the M42? M42, M42 yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the worst now with all the roadworks. See ways getting longer and longer yeah, as you start yeah. approaching. <laughs> but no, no, thank, thank you very much for braving that. And Thanks for having me here. Us. No, it's great to have you on. So... Just for the like, benefit of the listeners and the viewers, tell us a bit about yourself, like what you do for a living and like, you know, your background. Yeah, so um, I run, own, founded a business called My MyPA, um, which obviously is how we know each other. And My MyPA yeah. helps business owners via three things. We answer phone calls, we provide PA support and we follow up leads. Um, so I've been running the business for about, it's our 15, 15 year anniversary in March wow. this year which feels absolutely wild now in hindsight. Yeah. It's absolutely flown by. Um, yeah, and then prior to that, I was a PA. So my background yeah. is being ex an exec PA. I loved being an exec PA. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed and loved the impact you make on somebody's life when yeah. you have that like relationship going, you know how you can help them, you second guess things. And it was around 2008 when I started my business. Um, and just at that time, I can't only describe it, that I really wanted to start my own business. Didn't yeah. know what I might quite do, but um, I, I, went, I went and did a cake decorating course and thought I might have a cupcake business. Um, I thought about lots of things, but in the end, and at that time, the word virtual assistant was just becoming a thing, a yeah. phrase. It, I guess it was very early on in the virtual assistant industry. And, um, and yeah, and then in 2008, my PA was born. Fantastic. And you've never looked back since? Yeah, yeah. Well, I probably have looked back a few times and thought, have, have I made the right decision? But yeah. no, it's been, it's been a really fun learning journey, definitely. Yeah, that's it. So when you say you like your executive PA, was that like for like a chief exec or like a you know, big boss guy? Um, I was really lucky in hindsight now in that I was a PA to two different um, entrepreneurs in two different yeah. businesses from being like 21 to 26. And I, I, I think of them as business owners like us, like they're really in the thick of everything, they're growing, they're ambitious. And I was very much in the middle and right by their side. So I had yeah. like a real exposure to all sorts of problems and issues. And, and they were both small businesses, but powerful, so as, as in like, they weren't huge staff numbers. It was like five of us in each business, but the business owner was very successful, very ambitious. So I was really yeah. exposed to a lot of it. And it, what, my, my last employer was a property entrepreneur in Manchester. There was literally four of us, but, the, mm. but he had a Bugatti Veyron, wow. uh, which was parked outside our little crappy office in Old Tringham and like yeah. there'd be people outside it all the time because back in literally 2007 I remember when he bought it, it was like a million euros like it was a big thing to have you know to drive yeah, to work yeah. in that um, but there was like four of us in the office he'd had it like that he had a jet he'd bought a boat so like there was it was a very small but powerful business that was going on yeah. and yeah I was his PA involved in all sorts of things that you got involved with it was like one of those where you could write a book after it um, yeah yeah, whether there was like bailiffs at the doors or strippers at his house from Spearmint Rhino at the weekend. It was like <laughs> a really, it was fun and stressful and I learned a lot. Um, so yeah, so I, 
I went to university for a little bit, hated it, yeah. quit, got a job in an office, became, had my first PA role, um, and then had, which was very much like events, corporate hospitality based. It was, um, and it was to three directors in a crane company. And then the second business was, was this property entrepreneur that I worked with that was like the biggest learning journey to, that you can overcome any problem. Like he personified that, like if there was a problem, he was going around it, under it, over it. And so I feel like, yeah, I owe a lot to him, wow. although it was quite a stressful role. I, I learned a lot in like, yeah. if you want to move something forward, you can move it forward. I can imagine, because it's almost like you're like a fly on the wall, aren't you? But you're, you're right in the thick of it. Oh my not, gosh, totally yeah. fly on the wall to it all. Yeah, I mean, I was like, what, I was 26, 25 now. I think I had quite a naive upbringing and being around him was like, wow, what and this? And then, yeah, so it was yeah. like a real, like, I quit university, but I always consider like my role with him and then running a business as like the proper degree in business. Yeah. Do you know, like that's actually what real life is like. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. So that's really good. I bet that was really good insight then. So it was, uh, yeah, it was crazy. I should, yeah, yeah you could write a book on it, definitely. <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah, he's like, he did gumball rallies. He, you oh, can wow, imagine, okay. like, yeah, yeah. he worked really hard. And it, it was honestly it's so he stereotypical, like, yeah, yeah property yeah. entrepreneur. Like, he'd, he'd come into the office at 11, work through till 8. So that meant I was there till 8. It was back yeah. in the day when he still smokes in an office. And I was, we'd be sat yeah, in a little yeah. room together and we'd just be smoking and be like, right, we're doing this now, we're doing that. It was like, <laughs> Awesome. It's like something out of a film, but yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Is he, uh, was he someone quite famous? Is he quite well known? Or no, no, not in terms of like being, you know, like you'd read anything. about him. Yeah. Although the last thing, when I last Googled him, he did sue RBS um, oh, right. about five years ago um, because of how they treated him in the 2008 crash and everything. But no, um, just very, very ambitious individual. Yeah, awesome. really good. So when you started your business, off the back of that, I yeah, bet you had some momentum from that and like all I the did. Well, expectations. Um, yeah, no, actually when I, because I literally went in one day and, and when I started my business, I don't, do you know like people say you put a business plan together and you, I don't know what your experience was like, but I never remember pre-thinking it too much, like, mm. oh, I'm going to do this and that. And then I just like, I need to start. So I, I went in and handed my notice in and he was pretty annoyed about it at the time. Um, and he was telling me, like, did I didn't know what karma was and how he needed me at this time, and I was leaving him at the wrong point. Anyway, a week or so went pa went by, and God. then he said, um, well, okay, if you go in, I get it, you're going to start on your own, but I need you to replace yourself. So in the time leading up to you getting someone, like, I'll be your first customer. So actually, it worked out really well. For the first four months, he was my first customer. And I, w I was doing probably like half the hours for like the same amount of money that I had before. So it all Excellent. kind of worked yeah, out well yeah. in the beginning and it was a good springboard <laughs> to Excellent. it. Um, but yeah, I, he definitely won't know it. And I, I should reach out to him to tell him what an impact he had on my life because when I did start my business and yeah. it's the most weird, scary, I mean, it never ends being weird and scary and all the things that happen, does it, in running a business? It's but different types of weird and scary. Yeah, different <laughs> types. It's just a roller yeah. coaster, isn't it? You yeah, get yeah. these unbelievable highs, unbelievable lows. But I definitely, being around him helps me go, oh, well, it's meant to be hard. Yeah. You just have to keep moving yeah, forward. Yeah, it's meant to be hard. It's challenges every day. Yeah. Yeah, no, brilliant. So once, like, obviously, you got into the PA world, uh, was it straight away that you started doing the core handling stuff or was it, did that kind of develop on? No, it wasn't. Um, it was, as with many things in my PA, and I'm sure most people's businesses, like things just happen and, and yeah. occur. So because my background was, was being an exec PA, that's what I knew. So that's what we provided to start. And as I, mm. so for the first five years, it was me on my own, so like 2008 to 2012. Then in 2012, not sure I would do it this way if I did it again, but literally just got so many clients and hours built up that, I, was, yeah. I had enough to bring somebody on. I was like yeah. kind of doing double the work. So in 2012, I employed my first member of the team, which was Caroline. And um, together we were a really amazing team. She was with me till 2017 and we were building up, building it up. And then I would just get asked a lot, well, do you answer calls as well? Because it's a natural, mm. uh, they go hand in yeah, hand. You know, step. if you're doing yeah. things for people, like, oh, can you answer the phone as well? 
And it was just literally one of those things by chance where we were in Regis, um, which I feel like it's not as popular Regis anymore. It used to be the, the serviced office back in the day and I had an office there. And then next door there was a guy who was a software developer and did telecoms and we were talking and he actually our first ever foray into call answering, we had our own software built. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't do that again, building your own software. It just goes out of control and it's hard to maintain. And, but when we first started, it just literally came about by being asked, having a chance conversation. Um, and, and now it's about 40% of our business, uh, the call handling. Um, but yeah, it, it came about by chance ultimately. Like many of the services that we now offer as we've kind of grown and you realize yeah. what your customers want. Um, yeah, uh, I guess and you want to solve more demand, problems. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah, that's how the call handling came about. Brilliant, because I know that, because obviously we use you guys. Uh, so yeah, if you're a customer of ours, yeah, it has, it? Yeah. yeah. I was thinking back, like when I was doing research for this, and I think it's 2018. Oh, really? Yeah, it's that wow. long now, so. But it's just part of our process now, which is, you know, seamless, so that works really well. Yeah. So, because obviously I think I started off with you uh, for help with stuff for myself. And yes, then it, again, course. it developed the into- The PA support, yeah. Yeah, PA support, and then it turned into Oh, who does he call handling? And it was part and parcel, and we moved on. I think we've got like five things with you now, so you no, know, it's good. It's yeah. Developed, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. The call handling, the call handling is very much so. I know, like for your team, I guess it's like less of a distraction. It, yeah. The guys can get on with doing what they need to do. Yeah. Well, we use it for overflow mainly. So when you know the when they can't pick up, I think it's after eight rings, it goes through to you guys, and then. Yeah, you pick up the messages Amazing. and sort everything yeah. out. Yeah, because then actually, where, where where are your customers going? Are they going to a voicemail? They're like, why are they not answering? That's it. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. So, or they go to the next garage on Google. Basically. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Where they go. Yeah, which is definitely not what, what you want to do when you're spending <laughs> no. money on marketing. Is yeah, exactly it? So, that. Yeah. So no, it works really well, and so I'd highly recommend it to everyone. <laughs> so, uh, so you obviously mentioned your first boss, but throughout, like, I don't know if you don't have to name names or anything like that or anything private, but. What's been your most weird client or, yeah, the most wonderful, you um, could say? So, um, weirdest client. Def so, in the business, obviously, we've got the PA support, the call handling. The call handling, because, obviously, we've got the great British public ringing us, does yeah. throw up all sorts of, like, who was that? What was that? In particular, we've got one customer, and they all they sell is online batteries. Like, that's they're just an e-commerce store selling online batteries. They seem to generate a lot of really unusual phone calls for us. Batteries? Yeah, like um, people that have rang up. One, one um, guy rang up because his child had swallowed a battery and was really annoyed about how easy it was for the child to open the packet and swallow the battery. And we're thinking, I don't think you should be calling us. You should be calling, you know an ambulance or a doctor yeah, or somebody. 100%. We had one guy ring and he was looking for advice on which was the right battery to put into this machine, which basically, uh, it's almost like a squirrel torture machine. Like it's like a, to get rid of squirrels when you yeah. hang on to it, it spins and spins and spins until the squirrel can't hang on for any longer. And one of the girls in my office was like in this long conversation about what was the right batteries to put in this squirrel yeah. torture machine. So. <laughs> squirrel <laughs> torture machine. <laughs> The, this particular <laughs> battery station client does throw up a lot of weird and wonderful um, customers. And then on the flip side, we've also had some um, celebs, like people where the girls have been on the girls and guys have been on the phone. And they're like, so we've had like Zlatan rang um, one of our aerial installs to get a TV mounted on the wall, and he rang himself. But the biggest one was I feel like it was maybe was it late last year. Um, no word of a lie, Boris Johnson called one of our clients uh, who does um, after school, like football, like it's called Little Kickers, like um, yeah. football classes to get to register his child to go. So really? one of my girls is like, um, what, Johnson? And it was, yeah, and he was registering his son. His, uh, wow. Is it Wilfred or Wilf that the, him and Carrie had? Yeah, Boris rang, they were like, oh, wow. So yeah. <laughs> you think he'd have a beer? Yeah, to do that kind of stuff. I was shocked. Yeah. Like I couldn't believe he was ringing himself. Yeah, and we've also had Mary Berry ring, um, and that was also um, aerials. She wanted to get an aerial fixed on her room. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's like submitted for your Mary Berry rang for an appointment. Awesome. 
<laughs> so the, the call answering is quite, obviously, you never know who you're getting on the phone, yeah, but it does, it. it does bring through a lot of weird and wonderful. No, comments, definitely. Yeah. To be honest, so sort of when, when we obviously see the transcripts come through, they always sound a lot more dramatic <laughs> than they are. And yeah. like, we've got used to them now, so like we're like, <gasps> What's happened? Like you know, with the car, <laughs> with this, with that. And it's like, and then when obviously they, they ring back, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Because I think when they first ring, you take away that first, you know, the first angry bit or the yeah, uh, animated yeah, bit. Yeah, totally. So by the time you ring back, they they processed it. They've, yeah, they've let it out. So true. So, <laughs> that works out really well. So no, that's really good. So you're based you're based in Manchester City Centre. Yeah, yeah. And so you moved out from your Regis more. place now. Yeah, so we yeah. just was kind of, uh, there's like three or four of us, and we actually moved into Manchester City Centre in 2014. Um, yeah, we're in City Centre, we've moved inside the building a few times, most recently, a couple of years ago. So we had quite a boom over COVID in terms of business size. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole team are there in our office, quite a fun place to be. You guys have smashed it here, but like we, we have similar vibes in that there's a bar in there, and we try and make it a nice place to be too. Oh, fantastic. I see the pictures, I've seen all these videos and stuff on social media, it looks really cool. Oh yeah, when you no, spend a long time there, don't you? You want it yeah. to. Yeah, and you have your dog. Be it. Yeah, Ralph every day. comes every your... single day. Yeah. Is he your dog? So yes. he's at home and then you bring him in every day? Yeah. So he's like your work colleague? Yeah, which is great for me as well because he's there and he's not on his own and yeah. he's not you know, at home and, and the team also love him. He's yeah. yeah, part of so what we do. Everyone's dog. Yeah, we also have yeah. a really good knack of booking the Christmas party somewhere dog friendly too. So Ralph often <laughs> comes with his tuxedo on. And <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen those pictures as well. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, with the business as you've grown, have you found it hard to recruit? Has that become easier, would you say, as mm. the brand's grown? I think with recruitment, we've gone through um, peaks and troughs. So, um, I would say just as COVID was happening, like uh, towards the end of 2020 recruitment got a lot easier. Like we would yeah. get hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of applicants to a vacancy and we were inundated with people. Um, that has definitely completely changed now. And it was, it was weird, it almost flipped on its head 12 months later where people were, you were offering them jobs and then they were saying, I've taken one somewhere else. Yeah. It like, it changed so quickly. Mm. Um, and now I would say it's, I think, you know, I think also as an employer, you have to do the work in how you, how you present yourself totally, don't you, to make that easier. Like we get these things that um, really surprise me, they get mentioned all the time. So like our Instagram gets mentioned, you know, when we're recruiting, they'll say, oh, I've seen it, it looks like you have a great time, it looks like a fun time. Or um, the reviews that we have on Glassdoor get mentioned quite a lot. Now, I didn't, that wasn't even on my radar, yeah. but people said, oh, I've seen you've got like so many five star reviews on there and it's you know, you have to put the work in to stand out, obviously, in the crowd. And there are things that constantly get mentioned to us that even on Indeed, like the reviews on there, so then we, we put effort into making sure that people that have worked for us past and present put reviews on there too. Um, so all those little, you know, you have to go the extra mile, don't you, to make life easier. But those things really have really helped with recruitment, definitely. Oh, brilliant. Give me a few tips there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. There are We've things that constantly get mentioned and it's like yeah. our social i guess impression to the world yeah it, they're looking at it all the time no fantastic so like talking about social media and like all like your outward impression so you've got a kind of media tv series called my my, my TV, tv yes yeah. which i started in 2017 so that's 2017 yeah. so that was pre-covid how many episodes are you at now I think uh, last week was episode 238, 238. Wow, so yeah. 38. Yeah, would have been a bit further. There was one year where I skipped a little bit because I got so stuck in the business and I, and, I, and I thought this wasn't important, which is completely not true. But um, yeah, we're at episode 238 now. So you say that's amazing. You know, I think we're on, a, this is our seventh episode. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're new starters compared. <laughs> uh, so awesome, fantastic. But with your, with the series, you know, you said that it's so important. How do you kind of promote that? Is that by email, by on YouTube or all of the above? Yeah, so I guess like we tick all the boxes and it, and it sits everywhere, like yeah. on YouTube and on our website and did the different social media platforms. But without a doubt, us sending it to our email list is the number one every single time in terms of like tangible returns from it of people saying, oh yeah, I am interested in that or that really helped me or yeah. it's been, it's our focus like, 
although I've been going, we've been, we're on episode 238, I think we're at like 1500 subscribers on YouTube, which I know isn't massive. And no, it's hard to get. Yeah. It is hard as well. And I'm sure we could have been much further on by now, but our focus has been around growing our email list um, yeah. and, and just putting it in front of them. Because obviously once you've got your email list, you, you can communicate with them, can't you? You know, you yeah. can sell them things, you can help them, you can provide value. Um, so yeah, so our, and, and, and my TV, I mean, this is like obviously like really amazing production long form. My, my TV has been about like seven minute chunks every yeah. week and it's intended to give value, help you like leverage your time, productivity, grow your business. Um, and it's just been, it's been the key thing in setting us apart, in positioning us. And because the, th the thing that I realized Probably not, I didn't realize it quickly, I realized it much later, but like we are few and far between the people that go and make the effort to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody could do it, everybody could do it on their iPhone, but they don't. Mm. And then when you do do it and you put the effort in every week and it goes out and, and you don't, like the, the, the year that I missed quite a lot of months, I definitely regret that now because when we have it going out rhythmically, leads it it's mentioned to me like people say oh i watched episode 149 the other day that was so helpful like just the the yeah the the i don't know what the word is like the personal brand the it's because it's constantly out there in the it's ether. Like momentum isn't it yeah the, the momentum business. of yeah. it that's exactly the word i'm looking for and because i yeah. guess there are so many episodes of it now just the likelihood of you know i had on a whatsapp from somebody who said to me that they'd watched episode 149 yesterday well, like we're 100 episodes on now. I don't even remember what that was about, but somebody said, oh, that was really helpful. And it's just, it's <laughs> yeah, there then, it's uh, an asset. It's <laughs> in the ether, people can consume it. And No, yeah. it's really good. I always remember uh, when I did Daniel Priestley's Key Person of Influence course at Google had done a study. And it was basically that for somebody to buy from you, they, I can never quite remember the stats, but it's like somebody had to see you in seven, seven different, they had to see seven different times in four different locations in 11 different, there was like a seven, four, 11. And it was, they had to see, I should have really remembered this stat properly, but they have to basically see you and learn from you and like consume your content in different ways on different platforms yeah. before they then go, oh yeah, I'm going to go and get my MLT done at MotorServe. Do you know, like yeah. the, whether it's just like a Google My Business review and they see you on Instagram or they get an email or um, and so the the video has really helped us just be in more places. No, definitely. That's what, yeah, it's exactly the thoughts behind this, this whole series and yeah, what we're like doing, because it's, you've got to do it. How many other garages, service and sales are doing this, I would think. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's more it's like building up the brand and building yeah. up the public awareness and everything else, so. Definitely. And trying to help, you know, because hopefully you know, there, there is uh, tips and uh, there's good advice from wh what you've said so far. So if this benefits like one person, yeah, we've done a job. That you know, is totally good. my mantra on it as well. If, yeah. it, if, I, the, yeah, if it helps one person. Definitely. No, fantastic. So I know because I met you through uh, a marketing company network, uh, Ideal Result. And so I've known you since 2016. I know you like your business networks and you like uh obviously different networks all around the country yeah. what are you part of lately is, is there anything that you've been doing yes uh yeah no i do love it and, and and it's it's about obviously like meeting people like we've met each other we do yeah. business with each other it's also about learning and is it you know and being around people that are going definitely. through the same roller coaster as you but definitely my number one has and always has been since 2012 entrepreneur circle uh, that Nigel Bottrell runs that yeah. from like a marketing and sales perspective it is it is brilliant like I can't uh, rave about it enough that and then so I do that very consistently um, and then the other thing that I'm a part of which yeah I do that pretty consistently less so but is is Daniel Priestley's stuff um, okay. with Dent and Key Person of Influence so he's got like five different books that go through the entrepreneur journey of yeah. starting to wanting to scale and sell effectively. But yeah. um, I'm about to restart Key Person of Influence and do it for a second time in October. That has been, from a perspective of learning, like the stuff Daniel talks about is, is just brilliant, but also meeting really like-minded people. Those are like my two key ones that I put my time and effort into. Yeah, because it's the relationships, isn't it, that you build through it? Yeah, but it's so, imp it's so important to run in a business because if you, yeah, you try and do it all on your own, it's just, 
Yeah, it's, it's a lot hard. harder place. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. It's uh, so on. I see obviously social media and stuff all the time, and you're into your fitness and you do marathons and stuff. Is it you've been doing? I well, I've been doing a lot of running, and I have mm. I've had an online fitness coach um, recently, which Brilliant. has kind of like triggered a lot of what I'm doing. I'm also very lucky that my boyfriend is on his way to wanting to become a. Tri- a I'd say professional, semi-professional triathlete. So wow. he's just done an Ironman yeah, yeah. in the summer. Wow, wow. So that, that volume of training yeah. can only encourage you to, do you know when somebody's <laughs> going out so often and training, it only encourages you to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, no, I've been, I have been on a bit of a journey, most certainly for the last nine months of fitness, running, losing weight, feeling better. And it has had a direct impact on me running my business as well. Really, you say that then? Yeah. So yeah. It, it has, um, and there's, there's two things from it specifically. So I had this online fitness coach and it was the key goal to lose weight because mm. COVID, bad habits, like didn't go to the gym anymore for a year. Do you know, just drinking rosé wine each night, you just like a bit of creep. So originally it was, I just wanted to lose some weight, but as part of it, I get two things. So one, my fitness journey has just been about rhythm. So rhythm of like tracking calories, number of steps, working out. And I... I realized like it's the same in my business in that Mm. the rhythm of doing the right so it's the rhythm of getting this podcast out or my tv out every week do you know like the rhythm of getting so many leads per week they all leads to the good stuff Mm. so the rhythm of doing the same things has like I've lost a stone and a half over the past nine months and but it's also like really affected my stress levels they have plummeted and I'm I'm honestly not just saying it so I would be in a in a cycle of oh, I had a rubbish day, you're going to have a glass of wine in the evening. That's how I would yeah, handle it. it. Yeah. But, you, but what you don't, what I didn't kind of realise is you're in a vicious circle of, you know, you wake up sluggish, you don't attack the day in the same mm. way, then you like, feel, you know, everything feels like a slog. And now since I've put loads of focus onto what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, I'm, am I doing my steps? Or I'm going to go to the gym instead of like going home and pouring a glass of wine. Honestly, my stress levels have plummeted. They really wow. have the way I handle things. I don't be wrong, like I still have my days. That, um, but when things happen, I've just been aware that consistently, because also as part of this online fitness coach, like I track my week. So I'll say if I hit all the things, but it also will ask you to reflect on like how stressed have you been? Have you slept mm-hmm. well? And then what you put focus to, you change, don't you? Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like once you actually focus on something. So um yeah, I'm very grateful that I started this because not only do I feel better, but yeah, the way I handle myself at work and approach situations and my stress is definitely, if it was at an eight before, it's kind of at a three or a two now. Wow. Yeah. Definitely take that into consideration. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's it's easy to go, isn't it, when you've had a hard day, well, I deserve this, or yeah, whether it's nice a drink, chocolate cake cigarette, or, or yeah, 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 something whatever. sweet, or... Yeah. Um, but what, and at the beginning, obviously, like anything, it feels crappy and it's really hard. But then as you get into it and you realise oh, I'm starting to feel better, it obviously gets easier the more yeah. you do it. Um, like filming these? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, definitely. It's, it's real like, joy at the start. Yeah, you have to keep going, don't you? To, yeah, definitely. Like we're all rubbish at everything in the beginning and then you just have yeah. to learn and keep going as you do it. And just improve, as you say, anything that you focus on you tend to monitor and improve and yeah. you know, it just gets better and better. Yeah, totally. No, definitely. Take some, yeah, that's good advice for myself as well. So, <laughs> no, that's brilliant. So that's like, with all the fitness and everything else, so that's, would you say that's how you've got your energy? But, you know, before you did all that, what used to drive you? You know, what drove you, like, to set up the business and kind of, you know, day to day and just get through everything? Um, what drove me? I mean, I guess a couple of things. I... So when I was a virtual PA, like there were lots of virtual PAs. It's like, I think there's like three and a half thousand in the UK. Wow. And I just always really wanted to create it into a brand, a place where people love to work, a, an entity. Like I know that's probably not quite a vague answer, but I, I, I always knew that the industry was like going to become bigger and bigger. And I wanted to really build something that was, you know, we, that was about customer service, but that, that had a real energy inside it. And, and actually my very, very ever first boss when I left uni was, um, it was the only time I've had a female boss actually. And she was really 
horrid. Like she was the complete opposite really? of what I would ever want to create. And I feel like my experience there very much drove me to how, like where I would want to work. I wanted to mm. create that for the, for the people in my PA, the, you know, the team around me. So, um, and you know, from a completely, I don't know if this is like chip on my shoulder or what it is, but I also just, I've always been very, I wanted to see what I'm capable of and what I can create and push and if that makes sense. Like, yeah. um, do you know, I can have dreams of, you know, when, when there was 10 of us in the business, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Can't lose 10, it would be brilliant if there was 20 of us. And like now there's like 35 of us in the business. Mm. And, and every time you reach a goal, like, what can I do next? How can I grow it bigger? What service can we add in? And a lot of it is about, how, you know, I, I, want to, I want to leave a mark, I want to leave a legacy, I want to grow a business where people love to work. I, yeah, I really just want to. I feel like most happiness comes from progress. And, you know, it's not like yeah. the end goal, is it? It's not no. the selling your business or buying the Lamborghini. It's the... the Journey. It is, yeah. and I know that's so cliche, but literally making the progress is... Yeah the bit that makes me buzz, like when we get a new client that's booked in to get started or, you know, like all the small wins that go along. Yeah. So that, yeah, that is very much what drives me. I know what you mean, because it's like throughout day-to-day -day life in business, like you've got this problem, you've got that problem, you've got this problem. And when you're in the middle of it, you're like, I wish we didn't have these problems. Yeah. <laughs> but then when you actually find yourself in a period of everything's calm, everything's like nice, you get bored. It, it's so true. And, and, and when you... Like instinctively, I think, oh gosh, no, that's not true. I'd love it to be calm, but it's just not true because, like, you know, we're launching and we've launched a new service this summer. Where mm. we wouldn't keep doing these things if we just wanted it to be calm, would yeah, we? Yeah, at exactly. all? And I very much realised that, um, certainly in COVID as well, when everything was so quiet mm. and all of our businesses were affected immediately because people were panicking, and then as it started to get busier and busier, like that's that's the energy, you know, the celebration yeah. with the team, the. I, did, I actually recorded a my TV on it last year because we, for the longest time, I'd had like a revenue goal, and it felt so lofty to me. And yeah. it's like twelve months now ago. Anyway, we passed this revenue goal, mm. and then when we passed it, it was amazing. And I did like I, I'd um, written a post-it note on a bottle of champagne like two years before that when we passed it, I'd, I'd open it. So we had it, and it was really, really nice. But I was very aware of that drinking of the champagne isn't like the big wow moment. Mm. It's all the bit up to it where you're like, oh, this, this one early there. And it's like, isn't it? You know, it's the energy yeah, of, we've got another client on, this has happened. And that's, that's the bit that's actually the exciting bit yeah, as, you go, yeah. as you get in there. We did the same, we had a revenue target and we broke through that a couple of years ago now. And it's been like, can we get to double? Yeah. And kind of like, <laughs> can we do that? And it's kind of like, well, yeah, you got from zero to that, so why not? Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Looking for totally. the next, yeah. Break it down and start to go back through the steps. Like, how do we do that? Or what we're we doing? And, you yeah, know, just double it. Will it double everything? And it's like, it's a bit harder than that, though, isn't it? Operations wise. It, yeah, certainly yeah. it is harder than that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> we clearly enjoy it. Otherwise. I know. That's, you know what you said there, though, is, or what summary we came to. My wife tends to say this to me a lot that, why are you always doing something or why can't you just calm down and like just yeah just live normal whatever yeah. that means and it's like there's a lot we're always on the edge we're always doing this we're always doing that we're always doing this and it's like do you know when i i don't really when i have downtime i end up looking for something else or doing something or buying something or thinking this is a really good idea or this or that and it's actually like it's actually dangerous to have spare time you should actually just keep yourself occupied in, yeah. in your in your original quest that's yeah. the way I, I kind of put it to her now. So that is also yeah. I know I can imagine. I mean, yeah. my, my dad has always said. My dad had his own business. He actually had a um, commercial vehicle garage, so oh, they wow. repaired yeah. heavy goods vehicles, and they did like the bin wagons for the councils and oh, things, cool. and like big Sainsbury's wagons. Yeah. So my dad was always very much like, and if you want to do something, you should just go and do it and try yeah. it. And I just, I mean, I love, I love starting new things. I love trying new yeah. things out, and I just think the worst thing will be that at some point in the future when you're older and it's like, if you mm. didn't do it, that is just gonna be- The regret. The worst thing in yeah, the world, yeah. isn't it? Well, you know, talking about that, you know, this wasn't on the script or anything, but just uh, leading on from that, the, when people see you from the outside, you know, when people are looking at like business owners, are looking at businesses, you know, successful businesses, uh, you know, getting up to lofty heights, it's not always rosy though, is it? 
there's like failures along the way and oh there's gosh. problems. So what would you say is one thing that you've tried and that you've you know, had to take the decision not to do any further or has it been anything? Has everything been? Um, I think, I don't know whether it's something that I didn't take any further, but like quite, like quite frankly, from 2012 when I employed the first member of my team mm. to 2019, it was a slog. It really was. Um, we had, we like 2015, I think we got to 10 people. And then from 2015 to 2019, it was like a few steps forward, a few steps back consistently. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, it was only when we really cracked the rhythm of sales and marketing and getting that rhythm going is when we started to grow. But I mean, gosh, throughout that time, it's... Yeah, I, I would compare myself constantly to other big players in the market and like yeah. see what they were doing and wondering like, gosh, they only started a couple of years before me. And now, you know, and like they're, they're doing really well. I would do this all the time. I would, I would look up people, that, other businesses that I admired and be mm. like, wow, what am I doing? Um, and I mean, yeah, if anybody's like in that period of time, I was there for so long um, and like there's so many times where I'd, there's probably like three key times where I think well I'll give it another six months and see if it gets like if we grow and then we did crack this rhythm of sales and marketing and literally in the past two years the revenue's grown 197 percent so it's like wow. we've had like really serious growth yeah and I, I do you know like the the picture that you see on social media and it's the guy like digging and he's like this far from the carrot yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. you don't realize how close you are yeah like when you say it's not all rosy, no, it's definitely not for for such the longest time. I was, I always had in my mind, I know this has got legs, I know it's possible. I just couldn't quite find the right way through of how to get there, and then, and then we were a lot closer than we actually thought to, to get in there. But yeah, that's it. It's um, yeah, just something inside me was like. I just have to keep going, although, although like at 2019, back to 2012, it felt like such a long time. You know, I remember thinking at 30, like, gosh, you're gonna be a millionaire soon. I mean, still not, you know, you know like that's yeah. not how the world works. It's just, or how business works. It's like that constant journey of chipping mm. away, chipping away. And then it, I'm, I very much think it's a, once you just start to get the momentum and it, and it, mm. and it happens. That's the thing. But yeah, when you said that, yeah, that, that definition of like the millionaire, because someone else said this to me, they said that, you know, turning over a million or having a million in the bank or having a million in assets, yeah, yeah. they're all yeah. technically you're a millionaire. Totally, totally. But oh, I was are so, you? I've been so yeah. naive about that the whole yeah, time. That's yeah, it. And now, um, so like the, the business is much larger. It, I'm, I'm grateful in that it doesn't. It definitely doesn't run without me because I'm I'm the marketing of it. But you know, the operational it, it yeah. happens. And now, what is really like success to me is how I choose to use my time. Like yeah. so, in the days when you have to get stuck back into the business, I don't feel successful then. But in the days when I'm like, oh, I can record my TV or I can create content or I can go and work from somewhere completely else to get inspired and then that, that's that I feel successful then do, do you know like how I'm yeah. that I have choice over how I spend my time yeah. like so like in um, October me and my boyfriend were going to Girona for four weeks and, we're, and I'm going to work from there he's going to cycle because it's like the cycling wow. capital yeah. of the world um but me being able to do that feels like success to me now yeah, whereas 100%. back in the day 10 years ago I was only ever talking about well you know if you're a millionaire if you do this if you do that or yeah. um yeah not and not fussed by it at all now. It's more about how I get to spend my time and am I enjoying what I'm doing yeah. with it? You're right there, because I, I used to be like, you, know, you see cars and you yeah. see material possessions, yeah, you see totally. this. I get more like envious when I see people on a holiday now. Yeah. And when I see people <laughs> literally like, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'd love to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I can't, you know, I've got this to do, that to do, this to do, the whole yeah. world would fall apart if you weren't there and blah, blah, blah. And it, yeah, you're right, it's the freedom of time, isn't it? I think for me that is, is the number wealth. one and obviously yeah. be, having means to be able to do things in it is great, but certainly choice of freedom of time of doing something you really enjoy for me is number one now. Yeah, no, awesome. So, because you're here yeah. and obviously we're surrounded by them and it's obviously <laughs> what we do for a business, Let's talk cars yeah. in the Top Gear fashion, uh, I think. 
I don't feel like anybody's ever said to me, let's talk cars before. No, 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 no. There you no, go. Cars, There's always a first. We'll give, it a, yeah. we'll give it a whirl. So you've come up to the, well, come down today in yeah. your lovely Audi Q8. But you had another car, didn't you, recently? We did, uh, alongside it, yeah. So I, mean, yeah. I do really love this car. For me, it's like sitting in a sofa and driving. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. comfortable. Yeah, we had a Porsche take on, um, yeah. I had it about two years. Uh, I say we did because we gave it back about three months ago because the experience wasn't for us. Um, yeah. So obviously, for those that don't know, the Porsche Taycan is a fully electric car, yeah. fully electric model. So would you say it's a car or the powertrain or the... Yeah, I would say it was a few different areas of it. So um, what we so we got it Christmas twenty twenty. I yeah. don't know when the Taycan came out, but I feel like it was quite early on uh, in yeah, the journey for new, yeah. Porsche of yeah. electric cars. Um, and it was just it was just never right. It just never worked properly. And um, mm. it was back in the garage all the time. Things that needed to be fixed. I guess they were working through a lot of problems at the time. Coupled with that, the customer service experience was really poor for, for like a luxury yeah. car brand. Um, you don't often hear that with Porsche, to be really? fair. Yeah, Porsche is usually you know, they're one of the best, but I think it's more to do with, as you said, the car was quite early development Well, it stages. also became yeah. quite apparent that when things went wrong, they didn't quite know what it was going yeah. to be until they got it in there and they had to plug it in and find out. It's the experience, isn't it, with it? Because a, yeah. a lot of it, yeah, working the service side, you see a lot of repetition with the different brands. So when someone rings up and says, I've got this issue with an Audi, you you're like, know. we've done about 50 of them, like, I know what's wrong with that. But when you obviously got new tech. Yeah. It's kind well, of like, yeah, you could feel manual. it from them yeah, that yeah. they didn't quite know. And then, so then I guess alongside <laughs> that, when they'd say, oh, no. it's going to be back tomorrow, it never was. And yeah. then it was like another day and another day, it's like, I needed it back. Um, and yeah. so it just wasn't a, it wasn't a great experience from that side. And then also, so, um, we have recently just moved, but all throughout that time, we lived in the city centre of Manchester. Yeah. And so the charging of the car, I think, I mean, some areas, I'm sure it's different. I'm sure I know a lot of people that have got them installed at the house or at the office, the chargers. Yeah. But for us, it was it was quite a planning mission to where we were mm. going to drive it to charge it or where we were going to drive to. Did it need charging? I recall once I, I was literally the main place I drive is to Birmingham. But when I was driving back, I'd stopped at the services in Norton Keynes yeah. and all the charges were full. And basically I was there for around about an hour waiting and then to charge it. And I remember thinking, wow, this is wild. Like, you know, yeah. with, with obviously with the Q8, with any car you just go and uh, fill up and you're on your way again. It's mm. It was a real, it was something to add in that I just couldn't be bothered adding in, like the planning of it and the additional time that it took. So it's mm. a very beautiful car to be in and drive. Yeah. Um, it, very yeah, quick that, as well. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely very quick. That was really nice. But actually, as a car, in when you're like busy and you just, it's it's just something else that you had to think about that yeah. you really want to have to think about. I don't know about you, but it's hard enough to keep my iPhone charged. Oh my like gosh! Oh my Apple, I mean, my Apple Watch is literally dead now. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's hard enough to charge also. But I do know quite a few people. I feel like. Um, the electric car thing was a buzz and now they've reverted back to a petrol car because um, yeah. it's just a bit easier and simpler at the moment. Yeah. Do you know what? It's been the same, like, I don't know if you've seen many of the other guests that we've had and the, the other discussions, but it's largely the same. Is it's it? the same opinion and the same conclusion. Right. So the tech's great, the cars are great when they work and when they've got all the capabilities, but the, it's just the charging and just the, the faff of it all. Yeah, and the range is pretty good on the Taycan as well. It's yeah, like it's one of the best. 20 yeah. miles, I think, something like that. I yeah. know like one of my friends has got, I don't know the name of it, the MG electric car. Yeah. I feel like the range is like 120 miles. Really? I'm like, gosh, yeah. like, it's, you're not doing, yeah, it, they're very specific short journeys, aren't they, to do yeah. in a car yeah. like that. Like, personally, I think in the future it's going to be, because obviously alternative fuel cars are here and coming, so you've got your hydrogens and your the hybrids, the normal hybrid cars. I think it's going to be a mix in the future because you're going to need, like, for your own personal... Because if you were just tooting around Manchester City and you've got a charger outside of, you know, in your car park of your apartment or outside your house... Yeah. It's easy then. Like my father's got... Uh, I got him a, a, a Toyota hybrid. Loves it because he's literally just driving local. And yeah, he says, oh, yeah. it's great. Miles per gallon, you know, it's great. Really cheap, easy. Yeah. No, definitely. That's it. So I think it's going to be, obviously, won't be one size fits for all. But I think how they're trying to ram electric car, electric in, like, well, power into all different car niches, 
like it won't work for the luxury cars and the long range mm -hmm. vehicles and like, mm -hmm. sports cars, potentially. But we'll have to see, see how the market develops. Yeah, yeah totally. It's like when we go to Girona in October, we're driving there. Yeah. So then again, like in, if you're in, in this, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Q8, like if you're in an electric car, it's a whole new thing yeah. to add in, isn't it? Like, well, yeah, yeah. where are we going to do it? Like, do you know, pl planning in the charging and yeah, yeah, because when I, we drive to Europe quite a lot, and when we oh, like yeah, we drive Belgium, Holland, France, and stuff. So when we're planning it, I'm normally thinking about the stops or where I'm going to be tired. Yeah. Not where the car's going to be naked, you know, literally. Yeah, like, yeah. I know that I can feel, it'd be doing two tanks, but I don't even think about it. I'd think yeah. I'd just fuel it wherever. But when am I going to be tired? When am I going to be naked? And I'm going to want to break. Yeah. So I plan it like that. So, and yeah, I, tr I try to just power through and just drive all the way. And on the <laughs> way back, you kind of take it a bit easier. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it is it's definitely uh, it's a change of mentality and ethos, Mindset, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it? the whole, yeah. whole car thing. So, no, it's really good. So, Today, what's been your favourite car? Um, it's going to be really boring. I have to say, I do really love the Q8, and yeah. I would definitely get another one. Um, I really enjoy it. It's the most comfortable car yeah. that I've ever driven. I don't know whether that's meant to like people are meant to say that's why it's the favourite car, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just it. Nothing ever happens to it in terms of like it breaking down or yeah. it's. Um, it's it's like got the great size boot space. My boyfriend gets his bike in it easily because yeah. we need just everything about Fold it. Um, I really, I have to say, I'm not the biggest fan of driving. Like I'm, you know, when we go to drone and my boyfriend's driving, I'm not yeah. like obsessed with it. But when I drive that, it's it's a real pleasure. And mm. um, I do like a bigger car, definitely. Yeah, I'm the same because when I was younger, I used to have like. Yeah, whatever sports car, whatever this, the latest engine coming out, this and that. But now it's like I've had the same car for years, <laughs> and it's just big, comfortable, fast, and yeah. reliable. Yeah. So I think you know. Yeah, I'm all over that as well. Fitting in with business lifestyle, I think that's what you need because yeah. you, you need as little drama as possible, and so your car being one of them. Totally. You just can't be doing with it. Totally. So agree. I think yeah, definitely that's yeah, really I'm good. All, I'm on the big car hype as well. Yeah. I just like to be comfortable. <laughs> all around us yeah uh so what did you learn in what was your kind of first car in, in your journey of cars um it was like so this was what, back in 1999 98 um so it's like i feel like it's the equivalent of the mint choc chip fiat 500 now i had one of those turquoise bluey green micros don't you remember? like they were really popular with girls yeah yeah, yeah. it was uh, a round it was like shape micro wasn't it yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, yeah. micro it was like a little yeah. tiny the bubble car. yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um i had one of those Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same because I passed my test in, yeah, February 99. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, it was really? a Peugeot 106 <laughs> for me. <laughs> like, well, for my learner car. And yeah. then Renault Clio was my first car. And they, they, were, they were pretty good, actually. It was all right. They had good brakes, thankfully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was a big factor back then. <laughs> and ABS, which was good. But no, so, okay, so you learned in one of those. Is that what you learned in? Was that your first car? No, that was my first car. Okay. Sorry, the Nissan yeah. Micro, yeah. yeah. Um, I learnt in a Corsa. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and so, I actually got a Corsa after the micro. It was like a real boy racer one with skirts. Um, I really, I should not have been trusted with that car. Cause it was just, <laughs> I mean, I know there's a few scratches on that. It, the skirts were absolutely ruined the oh, wheels, no. so, but it yeah. was like a proper boy racer looking car. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. It was, they're still popular today. Are we they? still sell a lot of courses, yeah, SXIs, yeah. I didn't know they still made courses. Yeah, still, well, we're, obviously we sell used cars, so yeah. we've still got, obviously, used courses coming through. Right. And uh, the electric ones don't do so well, because they're like <laughs> 34 grand for a course. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So the electric one, yeah, the special edition one anyway. Oh we had one gosh. of them come through and it didn't really move, so we disposed of it, but yeah, it's quite quite a lot. 30,000 for a, a very course. It's a car, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's an electric course. Yeah, so. exactly that. <laughs> so, What's your thoughts on them? Obviously, you've had your experience with electric cars and you didn't like it and you kind of backed away from it. Mm. Do you think it's going to take off? Because I know Manchester pulled out of their congestion charge, didn't they? They say it's under review. Yes, they yeah. have done. Yes, totally. Um, I mean, do I think... I mean, I definitely think it's coming. Uh, is, isn't isn't the um, the mandate in that by 2030, all new cars will be electric? Yeah. Yeah. So far. I mean, yeah, it just needs the infrastructure, doesn't it? Big time. Um, but then there are the arguments saying that the infrastructure can't cope with it. We can't cope with that much electric. You see the grid. So it's going to be quite, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Back to bikes or horses. 
<laughs> horse and cart. You get all your stuff on the back of there. You get your bike on the back of that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you say, like I feel like in inner cities, short trips, I totally see it. Just yeah. right now, it's definitely not too... I don't know if convenience is the right word, but it's just, um, yeah, the infrastructure isn't there for it to be part of daily life on longer journeys, is it? Or No, mm. no, definitely not, I agree. So, going back to your business, with your, luck like, through the whole journey, this is more advice for the, the viewers and listeners. Yeah. What would you say has been one of the biggest factors for your success to date? Um, Very open question, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Definitely, I guess the summary word of it is resilience, like yeah. carrying on. I feel like nowadays um, it's, the, it's popular for things that you, they shouldn't feel hard or, you know, like this competition's not good, like things should be easier and that, that's not what life's about and that's not what business is about. It's, it's like one thing after another that you have to like learn or solve, isn't it? Mm. And so um, I... Definitely, I'm proud of myself, but like I, I know that I can withstand stuff happening. Like you know, from the mindset of okay, well this has happened, so how are we going to solve it? Because there's definitely been times where I've gone home and you're like, what is the like? This is too much. I can't like it's it's just hard. It like I could, you know, I'm sure you've been the same in that. There's been so many times through running my business where like I could have got a job as an exec PA and be earning more than I am now, have choice in my time, have less stress, sleep at night and stop at 5 p.m. Um, obviously, for some reason, I've carried on. And But that that ability to, uh, as an example, I listened to, um, so I'm a big fan of a guy called Brendan Bouchard. He's a bit like Tony Robbins, personal yeah. development. And he has this phrase, which I feel like sums up what I'm trying to say. And it's called honor the struggle. And it's about that, if you want to achieve anything really great in life, it was never meant to be easy. I don't know anything that comes to anyone that is easy, whether it's you know a sporting achievement or a business or earning loads of money. All of these people have had to do really hard things and I feel like there's a real trend. I don't want to like sound like, oh, you know, back in my day I'd be really old, but there's a real trend that things shouldn't be hard. They should be, do you know, like everybody mm. wants more comfort, more ease. I kind of see Quick it in fixes. some of my younger team members that it's like, that it, that, but that that is not how anything good happens in life, is it? Do you know, it all comes from struggle and solving and and being resilient. And so I just feel like honour the struggle, like honour that. Well, if I want to achieve this, if I want to earn that, if I want to have this car, if I want to do that, it comes from doing really hard freaking things, doesn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's not just like, you, that it, oh, there it is. So um, without a doubt, I could have given up my pain in 2018, 2019, when it felt like, wow, when is it going to get better? But I didn't because I was like, no, I have to keep going, I have to keep going. So that, that resilience thing for me is a key part of achieving for no, most definitely. people. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's, that's, yeah, well said. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, so your in-person networking and social media and stuff, you know, if you were to put a, and I have to put this like, if your whole success is 100%, how much of a percentage would you put on social media and like networking relationships to that success? Um, a huge, uh, definitely not like social media on its own, but the whole thing wraps up of networking relationships, people, yeah. um, most of that 100%, I would say like 90% of it because, you know, now like we've been going for 15 years. I mean, we've been working together since 2016, 2017. Yeah. Like, all of it has come from, well, from learning from other people, from creating relationships where people become customers, of suppliers, of, of helping each. Most of it has come from my, like my, my relationships with people. So I, literally yesterday we had um, a lunch with the leadership team and we were talking about like the more I get stuck in the business, we see the impact of, in a negative way. Like I need to be out there doing what I do best, which is, meeting people, partnerships, opportunities, strategies, you know, like grow and, and there are things that only like you as the owner of this business can do, like who you yeah. meet, who you have a relationship with. Um, yeah, without a doubt, the, 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 the relationship, the network, the, the going out when you don't really feel like it's that networking event and going, oh, actually I met this guy and he said this and that's, that's just yeah. been like the biggest part of 
Changes your perspective, doesn't it? Opens your eyes up to a wider world. Oh my gosh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Because you don't achieve anything like forward progress, forward progression wise sitting at your desk. No, no. I don't think. No, yeah. you don't. Not mm. at all. And I think that was like, it was a novelty in COVID at the beginning when everybody was on Zoom, weren't they? But yeah. yeah. I mean, that is so, like, it's like everybody real, everybody thought they were going to be at home forever on Zoom. That's it. And after six months, like, wow, it's just nowhere near. Well, some people are. Some people. I know, it's a bit annoying now. It's like, <laughs> just get to work and do, do some work, please. Yeah, I have a business coach, and when we, we flipped to Zoom, and um, we have like a quarterly meeting every quarter. Yeah, yeah. And I met him last week in London. Oh my, and, I, and I literally said to him, God, the difference us being sat here together, like talking yeah. about the next course, the next month is so different to being on Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's rubbish. So you seem like, you know, you touched upon a good point there. So you've, you've always had business coaches, you've always had kind of mentors, advisors. Definitely, like yeah. uh, who I mentioned before, Nigel Bosch have been in his mastermind since like 2014. Uh, you know, Daniel wow. Priestley, people yeah. that I'm in groups with, I like to say, you, want, you don't want to be the biggest fish in the room, do you? You want to keep being in rooms where people are like, I want to achieve that. I want to do that. I want well, to. How did you do it? Yeah, yeah. How did you do it? That's the only way that you learn. And so, do you find that yeah, people that like actually want to help each other down there that you want to tell you? Oh my gosh! Yeah, totally. Mm. Like yeah, people want to help you up. You just and also you need to ask as well. Like yeah. you know, I think feel like people forget to do that as well. Ask that they need help. But yeah, mm. I've been working with Martin since 2016, 2017, and having that. It's almost like a non-exec for me because. I am my business, like there's no, no other directors in it. And so yeah. it, obviously, as you know, it's a lonely place, but having that person to be out of it, isn't in it, like unbiased mm. to bounce ideas off has been definitely crucial. Yeah, because they don't have the daily stresses, daily relationships and the day, yeah, what does kind of get you a bit biased. Yeah, 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 so yeah. No, definitely. Totally. Yeah, no, awesome. So is there anything that you're able to share with us about any future projects or anything else that you're doing at the moment? Our big project at my PA at the moment that we like soft launched in the summer and now we've had really good feedback and we're launching, it's called My Follow Up, which does what it says on the tin, we follow up leads. And we've always done it, but as yeah. part of our PA support and it's kind of been mixed in. But I've just been so aware that it's, it's actually so crucial to a business. So when mm. you, you spend money on getting new leads in marketing and yet people kind of, they do the shiny thing. They want to like just focus on the new leads or how they're going to get more leads when actually most small business owners have got a pot of leads that they've either not rung in the past three months, six months, 12 months. Mm. And in my own business um, in 2020, our leads started to flow. I was trying to do it all myself. I did a really poor job of it. There was people sat in our list that I just wasn't getting back to or hadn't rung once I got my sales team in place and they never stopped following up. So, you know, like till they buy, till they die. It's not like we ring three times and then don't <laughs> ring them again. Yeah, we just yeah. keep, oh, how are you doing? And that has converted clients who've inquired like two years ago, three years ago, you know, that, that, and they yeah, wouldn't well. have come on if we, had, if we weren't just like, hi, yeah, it's me. You said to ring back this time next month. So yeah, we've got my follow-up and it does literally nothing but our dedicated team of um, people who love to like make friends, have friendly conversations and, and keep the leads warm and move them to an appointment, a quote, a booking. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah, so when you're doing a follow-up, because that's something that you do for us. So yeah, it's been really good for us, to be fair, because you do the follow-up calls for us after someone's been in for service and yeah. then the sales as well. So it's been really good. And then trying to get them to, you know, if it's positive experience to leave Reviews. a review for us. Yeah. yeah, or if it's not, that gets fed back through to the team. So uh, I see that, so they can resolve it, it and they can sort it out. So you're not, like you said, you're not burning leads, you're not burning customers that, and you don't even know about it because no one's ever rang them up. Absolutely. Yeah, they're voted with their feet and they won't book in again. Absolutely. But we're like, where are all the customers gone? Yeah. You know, and they haven't left reviews, they haven't come back to us. They've gone off in silence. So yeah. no, it's been really good for us. So I can see how that's oh, amazing. very, you know, that'd be my feedback on it anyway. So, Thanks, so for your address, yeah, no problem. Uh, so, to kind of finish up and wrap up, because I've kept you here long enough now, uh, what would be your you know, quick fire top tips for business or setting up or anything else that you'd like to impart? Um, top tips on business setting up is you have to do something that you enjoy. Like, because when it's hard, you need to still be like enjoying what you're doing day to day yeah. and have a passion behind it and feel fulfilled by it. So. 
um, yeah, my top tips would be to do something you enjoy. And number two is kind of what I mentioned before, it's going to be hard. But that's a good thing because when the hard stuff happens, it's going, like it's going to a good place. Like those two things, I feel like if you're, you have that in your mindset and you're like, you're expecting it, mm. everything else is easy. Definitely. No, fantastic session. Thank you so much for coming down today. Thanks been, so much like, for having really, me. It's really been good. fab. No, it's awesome. been really good. I hope everyone's enjoyed it and uh, look forward to the final edit. Thanks very much, Emma. Thanks, Cam. Cheers. Hi, thanks for watching episode seven today. Hope you enjoyed that. And please do remember to subscribe and follow both Motorsave TV and also my TV with Emma Mills. Hi everyone, thanks for watching today, episode seven of Motorsurf TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe the Motorsurf TV channel too.